I built a Scorpio Ballista and a Crossbow. Today we are gonna shoot them in this field. First we go to check the effects of the upgrades on the crossbow. On a previous video the fastest projectile out of the crossbow was 37 meters per second. In this video the crossbow is upgraded. I changed to a shorter bowstring made of Dyneema and removed 25 grams of steel from the tips. I shortened the stock for ease of operation and transport. On the first shot with 39.4 grams we got 44 meters per second which is 18% speed increase. Reloading the crossbow can be surprisingly tiring. Pretty fast I was feeling fatigue in my lower back because I didn't keep my back straight. The reloads aren't as smooth as they could be. The two axle trigger can jam in the open position and needs some fiddling to reset and the bowstring needs some help to sit in the loaded position. This crossbow could operate faster with the goat's foot lever but the steel winch was easier to make. I made the prod tilted forwards to avoid friction of the bowstring on the stock, but I should make it to a lesser degree because it seems to push the projectile tail up. I shot a wide range of masses out of this crossbow. The max velocity can be seen with the lowest mass and the maximum energy with the highest. The crossbow power level is good for small game hunting but needs a lot of tuning to be of any use. Next is a piece of technological breakthrough in artillery that was developed during classical antiquity. Somewhere around 399 BC, some genius engineers invented the first torsion engine for Dionysius I of Syracuse. I'll talk about the historical progress tree of the torsion machine design in another video. In this field up on Windy Mountain, we will take the first shots with this legendary weapon. The materials used are soft wood and steel, which are easily accessible in the modern market. The raw material is simple to easy mason's line which is either nylon or polypropylene. Nylon is better suited for a torsion engine than most other rope materials found on the market. The ancients used ropes made of animal tendons. Torsion arrow shooters were referred to by the missiles they shot. Three span would shoot a three span arrow, which is 68 cm long. The size of the missile determines the power needed to be shot at a certain range. The power is determined by the diameter of the springs. This machine has spring holes of 3.6 cm, but the springs are underfed and the effective diameter of the springs is 2.2 cm, which would result in an one span arrow shooter. The height of each spring bundle is 28 cm, so the ratio of height to diameter is 12.7 to 1, usually it was 7 or 9 to 1. The scales or dimensions are not in accordance to the instructions of the engines but the result is very similar to a handheld Scorpio Ballista. The most unique part of this machine are the arms. They are made from mulberry branches and the curve occurred naturally after polarding. The base of the arms where the spring bundles sit need to be flat so the arms don't twist during operation. I used an unusual and unique way of attaching the bowstring to the arms. This way the bowstring can't slip off even at extreme angles. Also the bowstring sits at the tips of the arms which results in lighter for given length arms, increasing efficiency. To insert the arms I put cloth to minimize friction, wear and tear on the spring bundles. The winding of the springs is done with a special spanner. This cannot be done without a lever. The pressure and friction on the washers is enough that there was no need to insert pins on the washer to prevent untwisting of the springs. Pins will be necessary if I twist the springs more. I thought the tuning of the machine would be difficult, 
ότι τη one of the easiest things to do, to simply balance the spring so that the bowstring is parallel to the frame. The strings attaches to the stock with only two screws and the load is spread on two side wood pieces. Then I insert the slider and attach the trigger system with two pins. The winch operates with the ratchet and pole and stays on during the whole operation of the machine. It is the thing that keeps the bowstring taut. The final parts to put on the machine are called adderides, which spread the load and prevent the frame from bending backwards or breaking off the syringe. This part might not be necessary in small arrow shooters, but it is an extra safety feature. For the first shots, the chronograph is set from 6 to 50 meters per second reading. We are going to shoot four different arrows horizontally. That way, the arrows will survive the impact. These are the first shots with the Acro Ballista. I set the chronograph to the next speed bracket, which is 46 to 140 meters per second.
Number one, 37 meters. It flew straight even though it was back heavy. The fastest, number three. Let's go. Now we are going for 45 degrees before we continue winding this up. Long grain shot. The arrow had a speed of 64 meters per second, so it might have surpassed 400 meters. It was nowhere to be seen on the clearing field, the woods were dense and on a hill, so we couldn't search a lot. Next, I twisted the torsion springs roughly 45 degrees more, and I started hearing wood creaking. I didn't notice any visible crack, but after pulling the bowstring by hand, it relaxed, and a long crack on the left arm became visible. The piece in the center of the arm created a weak spot and the crack started by the tension of the bowstring. I have to replace the arms before continuing with the experiments. Next are some bone shots with the crossbow, but this time we use the arrows we shot from the ballista. Shooting those arrows made clear that the crossbow needs more tweaking so that it doesn't send the arrows in random flights. <laughs> The arrow that surpassed 350 meters was 52 centimeters long. The metal point was 3 grams, the total weight of the arrow 16.5 grams, and the center of mass 23.5 centimeters from the tip. The point was 6 millimeters thick, the middle 7.5 millimeters, and the knock end was 8.5 millimeters thick. The arrow was sanded, and after boning with a steel rod, I rubbed a thin layer of base wax to make it shining smooth. The fletchings were plastic tape. Like if you like, subscribe for more and don't forget to share this video with everybody.